More than ever, the ultra-competitive landscape we see these days is forcing companies to make intellectual property safeguarding actions a top priority. IP protection is a broad-reaching topic affecting all industries and is especially crucial in the high-tech sector. Design is another sensitive area where OEMs are painfully aware that if their data gets in the wrong hands, it can be devastating to their business. But there is another component at play here, and that is the supply chain. Whether an OEM or a top-tier supplier, the goal is to restrict data sent downstream to only what is needed for a certain task or design. For example, this aircraft design has an array of antennas on its belly surface. Some are for GPS, while others serve different purposes. There's a high probability that there are multiple suppliers making these components, and they all require the underside surface data or OML surface. This is necessary for design completion, ensuring that the component's mounting surface matches exactly to the aircraft. These devices have relatively small footprints, so rather than sharing the entire surface, it's best for an OEM to map out isolation areas around each component, supplying only data that falls within these boundaries. But how can this be done without compromising the data accuracy? Stick around and see for yourself how Katia Isom handles the task. Now, if I am the OEM, I would probably have a layout of all of these components. Concentrating on this ADF antenna, I will draw a really rough sketch around it to map out an isolation area. The next step is to create a planar construction patch to further define this zone. So in this case, the initial rough sketch may not be necessary, but if you have tens or hundreds of these zones, it can be a huge time saver. The next thing I want to do is create a flange surface off the boundaries of my planar patch. I'll just extend the length of the flange, ensuring that it fully intersects with the loft surface. Now I can split these two, defining my isolation zone. So I select my loft, then the flange, hit OK, and I am left with a split feature as shown in the tree. At this point, if I were to delete the split feature, then its parent element, which is the OML loft surface, would re-emerge. This is a well-known expected behavior in Katia. But it's in the next step where many make a big mistake. There is a huge misunderstanding out there that if a feature is isolated, such as the split we just made, then the underlying parent cannot be brought back. This is totally false. So let's see what happens when we isolate the surface. At this point, if I were to delete it, it would just be gone. No parent would come back. But if I untrim it, it's just a couple of clicks. Pick the surface, hit OK, and boom, the entire underlying patch structure has just been resurrected. At this point, you probably have a headache as you head back to the drawing board. There are some traditional methods available, such as cutting a series of sections through the OML loft surface, trimming them to size, then generate a multi-section surface through them. But that is painful and time-consuming and depending on how many sections are generated, it may not fall within an acceptable tolerance when measured against the OML loft. But relax, because there's a better solution that utilizes the patch from patch command found in Katia Isum. Patch from patches will generate a new single patch using one or more adjacent patches and or faces used as inputs. The basic requirement is that the inputs are conducive to generate a four edge output surface. In some cases, you may have more than four possible edges, but in this one, it's straightforward. So after selecting the four corners, I hit apply and generate a new surface designated to be the supplier patch. Setting the tolerance is possible by opening the approximation tab. Here, there are plenty of options you can decide upon, including automatic or manual approximation and a user-defined tolerance. Next, let's isolate the surface and see what happens if we untrim our new supplier patch. If you recall, just a few moments ago, the entire loft was extracted after this operation. But that's not the case this time. Comparing the two surfaces, there is no distinction between them. Here's what it looks like when overlaid to the OML loft. 
Okay, that was a manual process. Now let's take a look at a more automated approach using a simple power copy. With another tab open containing my power copy, I choose the instantiate from selection icon, then open that tab, choosing the power copy from the tree. Now I'm back in my working part where I simply follow the sequencing, mapping my selections to those specified in the list. First, select the planar patch. Next is the projection direction, then the OML loft surface, a horizontal reference boundary, and finally a vertical reference boundary. Select OK and my patch from patches surface is generated. So let's hide the construction geometry and do a distance comparison between the two surfaces. For this, I will use a distance analysis, a great tool for measuring distances between objects. All the dots you see are samplings based on a discretized value that you control. You can see here the maximum deviation is zero, so the surface came in under our predefined tolerance of 0.01 millimeters. Now let's see what happens if there's a change to the design. An applied cutting plane analysis shows both the original and the new surface in section, so at this point all that has to happen is a replace operation swapping out the old for the new surface. Now that the critical job is complete, the next step is data handoff. Isolation is the easiest and most straightforward approach, but depending on the level of sophistication desired, publications may be a good option. A publication is an entity that references internal elements and can be used to share with other disciplines, such as suppliers or maybe an internal department. Publications by design are inaccessible but will update if their reference data is modified. So for example, in our working part, we can create a publication from our newly created supplier patch. After making the publication, a general practice would be to create a new 3D part to be used exclusively for all publications. Now it's just a copy and paste exercise from the working part to our publication part. Okay. In summary regarding surface IP protection, we demonstrated the wrong way, then using CATIA ISIM the right way on how to generate independently accurate surfaces that are bound to predefined zones for downstream uses. Two approaches were shown. The first was a manual method. The second was a more automated approach using a simple power copy. And higher levels of sophistication can be implemented as well if so desired. Thank you for watching.